chess is getting younger and younger and to promote chess among youngsters there is a unique tournament happening on chess 24 platform the tournament's name is polgar challenge and in this tournament top 20 youngsters from all over the world are participating the players are further divided into two teams one team is from the formal world chess champion Vladimir Kramnik and the second team is from the women's all-time great player Judith Polgar. I would like to say a few words about Judith Polgar that she is the only woman player in the world who has crossed 2700 rating point and she has participated in a men's section in Olympiad representing her country Hungary multiple times. She has won against uh, many top players including Vishy Anand, Anatoly Karpa and uh, Kramnik and Topolo and so many other players guys. So great great player and in this tournament uh, four youngsters from India are participating. Their names are Pagrananda, Nihal Sarin, Gukesh and Leon Mendonca. And in the third round two youngsters from India who are considered as the future of Indian chess or you can say the world championship material they were about to clash against each other. So you can say this was the clash of the titans among youngsters. Pragnananda and Nihal Sarir played in the third round and in this game Pragnananda emerged as victorious. So guys we will be looking at this game very deeply and thoroughly here in this video. So before we go further don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new here. In this game Pragnananda was white, Nihal Sarin was black. Pragnananda started with a very uh, simple and easy going opening and after the opening Nihal Sarin actually cracked one move which was uh, played by Vishy Anand which was kind of novelty and uh, then after the complications in the middle game Nihal Sarin decided to sacrifice a piece to open up uh, Pragnananda's king side but maybe he did not get the required compensation after that uh, sacrifice and then Pragnananda consolidated his material advantage and won the game in a very nice technical style. So let's begin with the game. Here Pragnananda started with d4, Nihal Sarin played knight f6, c4, then e6 was played, knight to f3 and d5. Queen's Gambit you can say the opening, knight c3, then knight came to d7 and now he plays a very famous opening move that is bishop to f4. There are many possibilities which happen in this game. This is the queen's game decline, classical variation I will say. Then d into c4 was played and in order to grab this pawn here white plays e3. Now the bishop is attacking on c4 square, b5 is played and uh, well the pawn on b5 is free but uh, black will be getting a lot of play after this move because now the bishop on c8 is getting into the game. Okay, So knight captures on uh, b5. Bishop b4 check, knight needs to come back so he plays knight c3 and now the knight on f6 lands on d5. Obviously it is attacking on f4 as well as c3 and we need to do something about this. So white player means Pragnananda plays a3 attacking the bishop but uh, Nihal Sarin was uh, well prepared. He played knight into c3 attacking the queen on uh, d1. Obviously here we cannot really capture b into c3 because bishop will capture on c3 and there will be a fork and black will win the exchange in this position. So what to do in this position from white side? Well if you capture on b4 your queen is hanging. So what to do? Well if you pay a little bit more attention to the position then you will realize that white can actually play queen d2 which is a good move. Here wherever you move the knight you can play it and white needs to capture on b4. Previously in this position players have uh, tried like uh, knight d5, knight e4 was also tried okay also some of the players have tried knight e2 also the point of playing the knight here is like after a into b4 knight captures on f4 and e captures f4 the pawn structure is little bit bad over here okay from white side is little bit ruined and black players play bishop b7 castles and then knight f6 and so on okay but in this position in 2016 vishy anand came up with a very nice novelty that novelty was bishop captures on a3 the point of playing this move is like uh, white wants to distract everything and he doesn't miss black wants to distract everything and he doesn't want a pawn on b4. Here you can capture on c3 which uh, was played in this game but in the game which I was talking about uh, between which happened between Wesley So and Vishy Anand. Wesley So decided to capture queen into c3 and one more interesting point I would like to say that uh, in this uh, exact position uh, 
one more interesting game between Anish Giri and Kramnik is also there where Anish Giri was white and Kramnik played bishop into a3 in this situation so guys you can check out both the games okay so after b into a3 uh, b into c3 was played and after this uh, black is having this uh, weak pawn on a7 maybe it can become an asset also in future if it uh, arrives a little bit further but that did not happen in the game black went on to play bishop to d6 white captures on d6 c captures d6 and now bishop captures c4 okay the some exchanges have happened and the dust has been settled down you can say and here now the time is to safeguard your king so black plays castles white also castles in this position bishop arrives on b7 square pointing towards this diagonal okay so this uh, knight on f3 is being attacked so white plays bishop e2 supporting the knight over here queen comes on c7 square well his idea is quite clear that he wants to put the bishop rook on uh, c file and attack the c3 pawn and at any position if black manages to stop this pawn on c3 maybe by playing uh, bishop into f3 bishop into f3 and d5 and stopping this pawn on c3 then the knight will be also be coming on the c4 square and white will be in trouble so pranananda understood this thing and he plays the pawn on c4 okay so after this move black plays a5 because he needs to do something about his pawn but a5 is being attacked by two players here means two pieces here and black needs to take care of the pawn on a5 so here pranananda simply develops a piece with uh, rook fc1 h6 has been played because the knight was jumping around so he stops that thing and also makes a room for the king in future if it's needed Pranandala plays queen to c3 and now rook fc8 well now in this position you need to plan something you cannot just keep on playing the game just like that and uh, when it comes to planning you need to like place your pieces in different position where you will be having some future so that's why Pranaranda in this position plays knight d2 his idea is like maybe at some point he might go for the exchange of the bishops or he can play in the uh, center with e4 followed by f4 or something like that and one more thing is also there the knight on d2 might be going towards b3 and attack the pawn on a5 so there are multiple things which are happening and here black plays e5 move okay obviously e5 is being played because uh, here if you play d5 at any point which is a mistake black will be getting the knight on c5 and uh, well another bishop into d5 is a good move but just to let you know like uh, a knight will be having a very good square on c5 and it will dominate the position okay so white really cannot play d5 but one thing we need to understand that white cannot really give the square for the knight on d7 that is c5 square okay so here the knight on d7 is an important piece and pranananda plays bishop g4 a very good move because see in your games you should always try to exchange your opponent's good pieces so bishop g4 is a good idea here e into d4 was played e into d4 now there is a piece uh, pin is there so the knight cannot really move so rook e8 was played and then bishop captures on d7 after bishop d7 queen d7 you can see that the pawn on a5 is going to fall and pragnananda gets the pawn here and now the position is very tricky here the bishop is there on this diagonal and black needs to do something about this thing well queen g4 was a very viable option in this position going for the g2 pawn and maybe a checkmate is possible in this position but not exactly right now first of all maybe you can play capture capture and then play queen g4 and now if you play g d5 in this position white might be getting some uh, good play maybe queen f4 attacking over here the queen will come back and at some point white needs to try knight f3 knight d4 and the position is still uh, kind of interesting okay but uh, Nihal Sarin decided to play in a different way he decided to play bishop into g4 sacrificing a bishop on g2 and after this sacrifice maybe he thought like he will get good compensation against uh, exposed uh, white's king but uh, he did not really get it here after king into g2 rook into a5 this is a very important move because the queen needs to be distracted from the main action here queen g4 check now a good move king to h1 okay so he captures the pawn and you can see that uh, the pawn on f4 f2 is also going to fall and we need to be very careful in this position so pragnananda decides to centralize the queen with queen to d5 the pawn on f2 is gone and now here four versus uh, two pawns white is having one extra knight but uh, you can see these pawns are not really advanced when the pawns are not advanced you cannot really take advantage of that thing and here white needs to play very precisely also but miss 
here at any point if these two pawns are exchanged the pawn on c4 and pawn on d6 are exchanged then the game might end in a draw very easily because three versus one pawn structure is there even if i have an extra knight the game will end in a draw so here it's very very important for white to retain the pawn on c4 square and that's why here he pressurizes uh, the queen rook f1 uh, and now black plays rook e1 obviously he is uh, trying for this this and maybe there are some uh, checks might be happening and black will be quite happy to give perpetual check but here pragnananda is a very clever player right and he finds out a very nice uh, tactical idea here he liquidates the position into rook and knight versus rook position by playing queen a8 check now king h7 is the only move and now can you guess the move well he plays queen e4 check okay now the rook on e1 is being attacked by two pieces so black must capture the rook and after this the position is liquidated now all white needs to do is like retain this pawn on c4 and bring the king in the game because I, this is the end game and he does that thing in a very nice uh, way first of all he starts bringing the king because always remember this thing that the king is a very important piece when it comes to the end game and you need to activate the king until now the king was hiding on h1 and being safe because the queens were there on the board once the queens are off the board, the king's power increases. So he brings the king with king g2. Uh, well, Nihal Sarin starts pushing the pawn with f5. King comes forward. f4 is played. Now king e2. Obviously, this king is going towards the c3 square. Support the pawn here and the knight's duty will be over. Okay. So g5. King goes to d1. He has only one aim. Go to the pawn on c4. Okay. So king g6. Now king to c2. f3 was played. Well, here in this position after king c2, if you pay attention then the rook on d4 is actually very badly placed the the thing is that king will be coming on uh, c3 square and the rook will be trapped so black was kind of forced to play f3 in this position in order to get the uh, movement for the rook or you can say the square for the rook and now he gets the pawn rook into f3 rook uh, moves uh, in the game he comes in the game with rook h4 but now it's too much like uh, you have lost one pawn he plays this move h into g4 rook into g4 Rook d3 attacking the pawn on d6 and now h5 he gets the pawn also and uh, okay they say the rest is the matter of technique h4 then uh, knight of 3 rook uh, plays this move king e3 h3 and now uh, rook h6 comes the pawn needs to be stopped king g7 okay rook h4 king f6 king f4 attacking the rook and this pawn also falls here and with this the game king e6 king e4 king d6 uh, king d3 king c5 he gives the check king some comes on uh, b4 square but okay no problem rook b5 check king a4 rook b1 rook d8 check knight d4 stopping all the checks and slowly and gradually he pushes the pawn forward and uh, with this uh, king's help the king is cut off the king cannot really do anything and the rooks are also exchanged on the board and here finally niha sarin decides the game so guys uh, i hope that you enjoyed this game the funny part which happened in this game was like after this rook d4 f5 f4 the rook on d4 was uh, completely trapped and uh, this was kind of very interesting position so if you like this video don't forget to uh, if you like the analysis don't forget to like this video and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new here we'll be meeting very soon with some interesting video till that moment take care goodbye and love you all